nation exhausted by bitter civil war, where a proud but broken people long to hope. Who will bring new life to the parched and poisoned land? Only those with the courage of their convictions. Even when I was young, uh, I would play around with electronics. And so eventually I became an electronics engineering technologist. Through some help of, of some good friends, I received the advice to go to seminary. I roared with laughter because it was ludicrous. Ludicrous or not, Bill Versteeg soon switched his focus to religious studies. Today, he is a pastor at the Emanuel Christian Reformed Church, about to embark on a journey that will unite his faith and his genius for electronics, a mission that began with a challenge from Christians who dig wells in the African country of Liberia. They challenged me to design a water level tape, and they challenged me to keep it for about 10 bucks. Price of the cheapest commercially available meter, $300. Cost of Bill's meter, $9.53. Bill's invention has been crucial in drilling 200 new wells. He has been invited to Liberia to be honored at a celebration and to dig well number 201. Liberia's clean water shortage is evident even in the travel advisories and in the aftermath of a brutal civil war. There are other worries too. Some of my fears in coming here is the reputation of Liberia as an unsafe country. Liberia was colonized by ex-American slaves and in 1847 declared independence after a century-long struggle with European powers and then Cold War adversaries to remain a land of the free. Liberia became racked by an internal conflict so bitter its last battle was known by its citizens as World War III. Since then, it has taken the world's largest UN peacekeeping force to maintain a fragile peace. For a first-timer, the UN presence is pervasive. It shows up most as we drive past UN posts, UN checkpoints on the road. Bill is on his way to the Christian compound on the other side of Monrovia. My impression of Liberia is that it is a potentially beautiful country. The wars have totally devastated the infrastructure of the country. Where there used to be power, now there is none. Where there used to be water or sanitation, there is none. The diseases that are spread by drinking water are most commonly diarrhea or what they call here running stomach, cholera. The diseases cause dehydration and uh, fevers and if that is not treated, people die very quickly. Since before the Civil War, an organization called Life Water Liberia, headed by Liberian Christians, has been working to provide safe water Today, the founder of Life Water is Pastor Bill's guide. Jim Garrels is my friend. He has interests in helping others with his expertise in water and hydrology. There was a, a man I was telling about my eyesight, and I said, my vision is disappearing. And he said, no, Brother Jim, your eyesight is disappearing. Your vision is stronger. This is what they had, Bill. I went down on my knees, I opened the lid, and I nearly vomited. It was raw sewage, right in the water right supply. Right in the well. Nobody in their right mind would want to drink from that unless they had no choice. And they had no choice. Yeah. Right from the start, Jim realized that the chronic water shortage would require a made-in-Liberia solution. Local pastor Robert Bimba plays a key role in life water. Robert Bimba is a man of God serving here in Liberia. He used to be at one time an engineer. He is serving in his capacity in sanitation with life water. He has a wonderful sensitive heart. We are just on the outskirts, also the fence of the National Defense Ministry building. So it's full of people who came here because of the wars? They found refuge in there and some of them are still there. During the war, people gave us the wrong choices during the 96 crisis. 
uh, it was terrible. They told me at the checkpoint that I should take the arm. If I don't take the arm uh, and be a part of what they were doing, then I should lose my life. As Father Bimba faced a dark decision. Just in time, someone came and rescued me. Many of his generation were not so lucky. Thousands of children were forced to fight on one side or the other. This country was overrun with child soldiers. Boys as young as seven were forced to do the unthinkable. I would hand you a gun with one bullet and say, shoot your mother. And if you shoot your mother, we will let the rest of your family live. Once you have shot your mother, you can shoot anybody. The toll, 250,000 dead out of a population of 3.3 million. As the U.S. waited out the war, Nigerian troops finally came in as peacekeepers, and the U.N. followed. The disarmament it was not because of U.N. coming. People voluntarily disarmed. People said, we are tired of fighting. And these were brothers and sisters killing each other on the same family. So when the disarmament came, people voluntarily gave in their arms. Each side had used water as a weapon. When one force overran another force in a particular area, one of the quickest, easiest ways to dispose of bodies was to throw them down a well. A well thus destroyed can never be used again. So when peace finally came in 2003, there were scarcely any safe wells in the entire country. And what's worse, the people continued to drink from poisoned wells. They had no choice. The result, one out of every four children under the age of five will die from water-related diseases. Water is a very basic. It's as basic as breathing. And if the water that you drink kills you, there's no future for a country. Today, most of the population of Liberia lives under the UN safety net in or around the capital, even if it means substandard conditions. The critical thing now is You've been living in a place like this for 10 years. Right. Your village is flat, it's gone. You have no safe water, you have no latrines, yeah. you have no social cohesion, the leadership is dead and gone. As a result, death rates from cholera and diphtheria are on the rise. Life Water Liberia is in a race with death. On the far side of the capital, Bill will spend the night in a Christian compound a way station on the road to the village where he plans to dig a new well. The well water is not safe. Every bottle of water that we fill from the well, we treat it with a chlorine product. Tomorrow, if the digging goes well, if his water meter works, if they find abundant safe water, he will have saved hundreds of lives. That's a lot of ifs. At midnight, Pastor Bill can hear the ocean from his bed. Here, as in much of Liberia, there is water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. A new morning dawns at the Christian compound in Liberia. Thank you for breakfast. Thank you for all here who are giving of their time to provide good water for people in need. Lord, we pray for your protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Carrying six liters of chlorinated water, Pastor Bill joins Life Water Head Jim Garrels and the Life Water team. The heat in this country just never ends. Sandtown, the site of Bill's first well and Life Water's 201st, is a village on the outskirts of the capital, a half hour away. First, they must pass through the ubiquitous UN checkpoint. If those UN forces were to leave, I have strong suspicions that the peace would not last long at all. The new well is not a gift. Sandtown will pay $20 a year to cover the cost. Giving cash for a safe drinking water supply is an important sign of commitment. Hand pumps are rarely broken in communities which have paid. They help buy it, they help care for it. A crowd, mostly of children, greets the team. The rest of the village is involved in preparation for the drill site. Women dump water into two dugout suction pits. Jim shows Bill the contaminated well the village has used. You can draw 20 pails of water, and the 20 pails of water that you draw, Bill, they would kill you. To drill for water, you need water. Without water, the drill will clog and seize up. Because the water doesn't have to be cleaned, the women pour the contaminated well water into the pits, 
to activate the suction. Then it's time for Jim to have some fun with drill expert Henry Yogi. When you stop to change the uh, raw, you have to bypass it. You have to bypass it into the clean pit. Yeah, this, this is the clean pit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In the borehole. How do you know how much water is in there? Oh, uh, I have the water meter. You know who invented it? No. Pastor Bill. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. My pleasure. They arrive at a village with a life water pump. The pump is being locked. If the water is supposed to be for everyone, why is it guarded? Hello, my friend. Hello, Father. You know, Bill, what this country really needs, every pump like this yeah. needs a man like this oh, who loves Kenya. the pump, so he's locking it. Why do you lock it? I lock it for water to charge. Even safe water wells have a limited supply of water, so a caretaker locks the well, so the water has a chance to recharge. <laughs> As their vehicle heads for the site of well number 200, Jim points out LifeWater's achievements. When you start driving down the highway, they will tell you, we did that one, and they're proud. We did this one, and we're proud. And that's what's neat about the Liberian crew for LifeWater here in yeah. Liberia. Bill and Jim meet up with Father Bimba at the rehearsal hall to celebrate LifeWater's 200th well. Reverend Robert Bimba has been the key person behind the scenes preparing the 200th well celebration. He did some incredible work in bringing in excess of 20 churches together to develop a mass choir. Choir expresses Bimba's feelings about the Liberian-Canadian partnership and the resilience of the human spirit. tears rolling down my cheek because I saw the reality of faith. It was just so wonderful and so healing to see it and to hear it in the voices. Bill is touched by the upcoming celebration, but he's more concerned with well 201. There are just so many unknowns when digging for safe water, so many obstacles. Today is the big day for Pastor Bill. If everything goes right, he will get to see the water meter he invented used to dig life water's 201st well. Even before the crew gets to the site, they encounter a setback. The truck breaks down. Not a happy morning. As Bill, Jim, and the crew wait for a replacement vehicle, Jim watches a couple at the side of the road. There's water holes, there's swamp holes, any place that water will gather deep enough to put what they call a gallon in. And when we test it, 100% of those sources are unsafe. All the team can do is look on helplessly. We can only do one well at a time, one village at a time. Finally, a new vehicle arrives and the team is back on track. The women of Sandtown are already filling the suction pits around the drill with water from their contaminated well, so the bit can turn freely. Henry Yogi directs the drill into place. You have an engine and transmission that turn that pipe that is going up and down through what's called the drill table. The hoses are set up so that the water goes from the suction pit through a hose up into the drill pipe, down the center of the drill pipe, down and it takes away the cuttings from the drill bit. Oh, 
As a professional courtesy and because it's his first time, Henry lets Bill work the drill. Drilling gives me the enjoyment of hands-on work with Liberian people and learning from their expertise. Another setback. The water from the village's old well has dried up. To avoid permanent damage, Henry orders the drilling stopped. This is the town's only water supply, and it drained totally trying to fill one pit. We have two pits we need filled. The old well is covered and locked in the hopes it will recharge. A truck goes off in search of water. It doesn't need to be safe, but there needs to be lots of it. To gauge if the hole is a sufficient source of safe water, Bill finally gets to try his invention. And this is a life water original. The water meter that I designed is a simple tool that is used to see how fast the water is rising within that hole. As the probe travels down the hole, the phone receiver emits a sound like a dial tone. The faster the water rises in the hole, the higher the tone it emits. Bill's meter delivers discouraging news. They need to drill much further down. The truck returns. The team found a stagnant pond. Drilling can continue. Another setback, red water. There is high iron in the water. So all the people do not like the taste or the smell or the appearance. Though the foul tasting water is safer than the diseased water in their old well, most villagers won't touch it. And so a lot of people will go back to unsafe swamp holes and river holes because it does not have that same flavor, even though that water will kill their babies. The team drills deeper. Every five feet they check to see if the red will fade. The fate of the village hangs on the color of water. Five feet. The red water is like some biblical plague. Five feet more. Will it fade? Again, five feet. More red water. At last, red fades to gray. After being plagued with setbacks, the team hits disaster. Rock. Suddenly, Henry shuts down the drill. They need an extra long, diamond-studded drill bit to get through rock. Even if one exists in the country, there's no sign that there's safe water down below. For the village of Sandtown, condemned once again to drink from his diseased well, as hitting rock sealed their fate. In Liberia, the attempt to drill a well for the village of Sandtown has been plagued with setbacks. The team hits disaster, rock. Pastor Bill and Jim hear the bad news from drill expert Henry Yogi. Not sedimentary rock. You just have to leave that place and move for another place. But Bill and the Lifewater team refuse to give up. I believe that a lot of good things happen as a consequence of God's people praying. As the Lifewater team scours the country for an extra long drill bit that can penetrate rock, Pastor Bill and Jim Garrels extend the search to Canada. Some leads are promising, but nothing pans out. In North America, faith is tested by the temptation to let 
our abundance take the place for God. Here, the test of faith would be to continue on even while suffering. And then. God, I heard something. Another Liberian drilling team has a drill bit that might work and will kindly lend it to them. Henry secures the new bit and drilling resumes. Five feet. Again, five feet. And again. Finally, water. But will it rise fast enough to source a proper well? Bill's homemade invention will measure it. He drops the probe down the hole. It buzzes all the way down. For the villagers of Sandtown, the moment of truth is now. Will the tone from Bill's invention signal hope or despair? Caught water right there. Caught some mud on my rock. As the celebration honors the drill team and its partnership with LifeWater's Pastor Bill and Jim Garrels, the choir sums it up with music. beautiful thing that I have seen in Liberia is a choir giving praise to God and thanks to God even though their lives every day are far far more difficult than any of our lives in North America. the joy of seeing you get fresh water, and we've had the joy of being part of this in your life. 